Welcome, everybody. We are so excited today. I have a dear friend with us, Sarah Madsen. She is a master herbalist, goddess living in Maui, and she has guided me in so many different ways with nutrition and herbs and as a true soul sister um, has been there for me in my life through ups and downs and everything in between. She is so dear to my heart. I'm so glad that we get to have the privilege of having her here today. So welcome, Sarah. Yes, Thank welcome. Thank you so much, sister. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's such an honor to be here. Welcome to Modern Sages Podcast. I'm Jen Gilbreth. And I'm Candace Coons. With over 25 years combined, we have delivered messages from beyond, explored ancient healing wisdom, and integrated these profound teachings into our everyday life. We are passionate about creating new ways of being human in the modern age. By integrating the wisdom of the past with the present and coming into remembrance of who we truly are. Are you ready to change your relationship to life itself? If the answer is yes, your journey begins now. It's awesome. Well, we always start with um, our show kind of talking about a favorite tea that we like to drink. And Sarah has a really beautiful goddessy special one that she wants to share. Yay! <laughs> <Love it. laughs> So today I'm drinking jasmine and rosebud leaf, which is absolutely, I don't think you can get any more feminine than those two herbs together. So I love it. And it's one of my favorites because you don't need any agave or raw honey. The rosebud is super sweet. So I do like a fourth of the jasmine because it's a little bit stronger. And then I do the rest, the rosebud, and it's the perfect amount. It's delicious. And it's light. It's not, it's yes. not a heavier tea because some of them can be. So I'm loving awesome. it. And um, what are some of the medicinal properties of jasmine or rosebud that yeah. you can share with us? Yeah. So rosebud is actually really good for your blood. It cleanses your blood. Um, they both have nervine qualities, so they're really good to drink. You can drink them before you go to bed. These teas are going to help you sleep. Um, they're also really high in nutrients, so they have a lot of vitamins and minerals. So it's a really good one to give um, kids, especially when they're sick, because it's a really light one. It's not heavy. Um, and like I said, you don't have to sweeten it, but you can for the little ones. So it's really good just overall, antiviral, antibacterial, full of nutrients. So it's a good oh, one. Awesome. It's perfect. Very cool. Yes. Thank you. Well, we are so excited to just jump in with you, Sarah. Absolutely. So um, really how I got started with this whole journey of mine, um, it really, it began when I was a child. So I was sick almost my whole childhood. I had headaches every day to migraine level and nothing touched it. No um, pharmaceuticals, no over the counter anything. I would have to just go to sleep and sleep them off. And so I missed a lot of things as a child um, because I felt like I had these debilitating headaches and migraines and nobody could figure out why. Um, and I also just felt like I was kind of that kid that just caught everything <laughs> that anybody had. I was going to catch it. And so when I got pregnant with my first child, um, and this was 14 years ago, I started thinking about my experience and what I went through. And I thought there has got to be a better way. There's got to be a different way than just having a sick kid all the time till, like everybody says, till their immune system gets stronger and then they don't have these things. I just thought this is, there's got to be a different way. And so it actually started. So I was kind of having those thoughts. And I was seven months pregnant with my first child and I was actually all set and ready to give birth in a hospital. And I had a friend at the time that just planted this seed in my head. She's like, have you ever looked into home birthing? And as funny as it sounds, I didn't even know that that was even an option. And so I started researching midwifery and then that kind of snowballed into researching, you know, like how to take care of yourself when you're pregnant, what vitamins you can take, herbs, different things like that, and then dietary changes and 
all of those different things. And so it kind of was like the snowball effect where I, once I started researching, um, you know, herbal supplements and different things like that, then it went into, well, what kind of lotion am I lathering on this newborn baby that I'm going to have? And, you know, so I started researching ingredients and I got really scared at what I was reading and like what was in this baby lotion, for example, or the baby shampoo that I'm putting on this brand new little being that I'm responsible for. Once I researched the ingredients on the shampoo bottles and all the things, it was like I had garbage bags on my front porch full of colognes, wow. perfumes, shampoos, all the cleaning products, the bleach was gone. Like <laughs> Everything was gone. And then I started buying, you know, natural products and products that had essential oils in them. And then of course, you know, after researching midwifery, I was sold. And so I wanted to give birth at home naturally. Um, so I did, I gave birth to all of my children at home naturally, um, which was the most empowering decision I've ever made. But I did a lot of preparation ahead of time. And it really wasn't until I had my son Gray, who was my second child, and he got an ear infection. And so that was the first time I really had something that I didn't necessarily know how to handle. And luckily, at the time, my um, friend who also was the one that mentioned, hey, have you, you know, considered home birthing? Her mom was an herbalist. And so she used herbs on all of all five of her children growing up. And so I wow. reached out to her and I said, what would you do for an ear infection? And she told me to use garlic oil and lobelia in tincture form. And I'd never used these in my life. So I used the herbs on the ear infection, completely wiped it out immediately. Within, you know, 12 hours, he was totally over it all. And I couldn't wow. believe it. And so from there, I was like, I was sold. I decided to go to the School of Natural Healing because I also at that time, I, I knew I wanted to use herbs and do it differently than how I grew up, which was all Western medicine that I really feel like made me a lot sicker. Um, I didn't know how to use the herbs and I wasn't going to be calling natural pads every time the kids got sick and, you know, they get sick in the middle of the night and who are mm -hmm. you going to call? Your only option is the pediatrician. And I didn't want to do that. I went to the School of Natural Healing and it took me three years to finish the program. And like I said, while I was um, in school, I was raising my children. So it was perfect because everything that I was learning at school, I could literally put to use with my kids. And I saw a night and day difference in how I grew up and how they grew up and just that empowerment knowing that you have what you need on hand for anything that they get, you get this really intense calm about you where you can handle anything. So when they get sick, they get a fever, ear infection, thrush, staph, strep, you name it. You know, it's going to be okay because you can take care of it with not only herbs, but diet too, because that's everything. Um, is making sure that you're eating really healthy and clean and then taking a lot of herbs to help support your body and those different parts of your body. You know, and I think kids are the most amazing to use herbs on because everything is so acute, right? It comes on quickly. So it goes away really quickly when you're doing the right things and you're using the right tools. Children are so honest. You're able to control the doses of the herbs, really figure out what, what works and what doesn't and how much you really need, and then get that immediate feedback from the kids. I mean, that, that is so awesome that you had that opportunity to really dive in fully into your gifts, working with herbs, and then be able to work this with your kids. It just feels like huge soul agreements between you and your children, you know, as far as your purpose and your gifts and helping them support you on your journey. I just think that's so cool. Yeah, it's been really amazing. It's been a really amazing experience. And it can be harder working with adults just because of the aspect of things being chronic. It can take three to six months, depending on what you're dealing with, even mm -hmm. up to a year, you know, for something to completely heal itself. Now, you'll see the inclinations before that point, you know, but like, for example, osteoporosis, my mom had osteoporosis, that's really bad having it to that level, calcium deficiency deficiency shows up, 
but it always gives you red flags beforehand. So like women who are pregnant will get hemorrhoids during pregnancy. That's calcium deficiency. Then it turns into varicose veins on your legs. That's the next level of calcium deficiency. And then it moves into osteoporosis. And my mom didn't want to do the -the over-the-counter stuff. And so she started taking herbs and she was one of those people that needed that scientific proof. So, you know, when you have osteoporosis, they do bone density scans. So she said, I will try everything that you're recommending. I dietary changes, things like that too. Um, But I'm going to go check and have my, you know, scan done and see what the progress is and then go from there because it was really serious. And she did exactly what I told her to do. And then within three months, she went and there was significant change. But it took her another six months to completely reverse it to where she does not have osteoporosis. Wow. The power of changing your diet. That's everything. It has to start there. And then you implement the herbs that you need, depending on what you have going on, whether it's, you know, something where there's fighting a virus or bacteria, or if it's just repairing an organ that isn't working efficiently enough, you know, like working on the bowels, cleansing your heart, you know, making sure your eliminatory channels are open and flowing. And the only way the fastest way to do that is to change your diet and then implement herbs. You know, healing is not hard to do. We make it so hard. Our brains make it hard. Western medicine makes it hard. Absolutely. And there's so much misinformation out there, even natural, organic, all these different natural paths can tell you different things. Mm -hmm. Like even in the natural world, (laughs) you Mm -hmm. hear different things. It isn't just Western medicine. So people that come to me are usually so done with researching and seeing all the misinformation and this is good for you and this is bad for you. And it's constantly changing. You know, I think people just need the information that makes sense and that isn't difficult and that they can apply and put to use and, You know, I think that's why I do what I do and why I have my YouTube channel. And I'm just trying to get the information out there. It's always been my passion. That is so awesome. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I was just thinking, too. I mean, you know, so many people get used to feeling bad. They don't understand that Mother Nature uh, or Pachamama, she made all of these foods and herbs for us, for our bodies. It knows exactly how to break them down. It recognizes the molecular structure and that ingesting those things. It's like, even if you ingest a lot of herbs, a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions about herbs because they approach herbs like they do Western medicine, thinking that I may overdose on it, or I can't hit it hard because you need to make sure I stick to what it says on the back of the bottle. I've learned so much from you over the years about how we approach herbs and how we approach diet in a healthy way, because this was the way that we were supposed to be living. And I think that a lot of people are shocked when they make that transition because they're so used to feeling bad. They don't realize how, how good you can feel, how light you can feel in your physical form when you actually ingest the things that were meant to be ingested here on this planet, on this beautiful planet. I remember one of the things that we learned in the herbalist um, class was that the majority of the medicinals that you need are found within, I forgot exactly what the perimeter Mm -hmm. is of your exact location, but even the fact that mother earth provides everything that you need for your physical vehicle within this certain parameter of every human being is just so amazing and so beautiful, you know? It is. It's pretty powerful. And, you know, our plants too tell us a lot about their medicinal properties if you know what to look for. So like one of the easiest ones is the color of a plant. What color is the flower? You know, okay. So like dandelion, for example, the color of the flower is yellow. Okay. Well, the reason that is, is because it's good for your urinary tract. So it's wonderful. It's, good for kidney stones, any of those things. And for people that have a hard time urinating and actually get really bloated because their eliminatory channels aren't working, dandelion can help that, you know, cayenne pepper, it's red. So it's cleansing for your blood. Oh my gosh. It does. It's 
cayenne is probably my most favorite herb. You can do anything with cayenne pepper. It stops bleeding. Um, it's good for your heart. It clears out cholesterol from your veins and your arteries, which is huge because that's the reason why you would experience a heart attack or a stroke. You know, so our plants tell us a lot if we pay attention. And it's so amazing to be teaching these kids this at such a young age because mm -hmm. now, because when they're little, <clears throat> You think it's in one ear and out the other. <laughs> they don't, mm -hmm. they're not listening. You're just doing what, you know, needs to be done. And so when you have your 14 year old, you know, like mine, who, you know, has a hard time sleeping some nights falling asleep. And so she goes in and she gets the herbal formula out of the apothecary that she needs. And she starts taking it every night. And I didn't say a word. She didn't even ask me. She just knew what she needed to take and what needed to happen. And I was so, that was when I knew I was like, okay, <laughs> I got this, <laughs> you know, these kids are listening. They're making the changes that they feel that they need. And, you know, so it's pretty cool to see it come full circle where now these kids will have that information because it's like so ingrained in them, you know, of what to do and what they can take and they listen so it's, it's going to be really beautiful to see with the next generation, how that plays out and how that looks, you know, because like I said, no women in my family gave birth naturally at home. How cool would it be if from here on out, it shifted to where more of the women in my family were giving birth naturally, even at hospitals or birthing centers, you know, different places like that. So it wow. would be pretty amazing. I was wondering like how, we were talking about in the earlier shows how we're multidimensional beings and how everything is interconnected, that we're physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. So what have you noticed as far as like living this lifestyle, how it affects you emotionally, mentally, and spiritually? I would love to hear about your experiences if you feel that this lifestyle brings you closer to Mother Earth or if it strengthens your gifts of spirit. I would love to hear like anything that you have to say about that area. Absolutely. Absolutely. It definitely does. I think for me, what I noticed first and foremost was just how much gratitude I had for these plants and that literally the universe, mother earth has created a plant that specifically targets and heals every single part of your body. <laughs> it's like, that's pretty freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. So that in itself for me, when I got started was just this immense gratitude because I was in a position where I could take care of my kids at home. I didn't have to rush them to the doctor every time they got sick, like my parents did with me. And just those different experiences, not having to put them through that was huge for me. So I think gratitude is what I felt first and foremost. And then the longer I was on a plant-based diet and taking herbs, because I had taken a lot of pharmaceuticals in my younger years and antibiotics and things that I really had to do a lot of repairing, um, especially of my stomach, my intestines were a disaster. And I think a lot of that was how many times I was put on antibiotics. So yeah. within a year, I noticed a huge difference with my mental clarity, with how I felt obviously physically and emotionally was balanced because at one point in my life, I did try taking antidepressants and I know that that altered my chemistry in my brain. And so I really needed to do some repairing on that. So I literally would just pick a part of my body when I first started this. And I think this is something that people should do regularly, at least once a year. Um, but to go through those different parts of your body and work on a specific part of your body for at least a month, if not three, depending on what you have going on. And like, if I don't have any symptoms in a certain part of my body, then I work on it for a month. If I do have symptoms like in my kidneys or wherever, or my bowels, you know, then I'll work on it longer. Um, and just going through and just picking a different part of your body because all of our different parts need to be detoxified and cleansed and nourished. And it's really hard to get that from just your diet. So 
I noticed a huge difference with my intuition and my connection to spirit. Absolutely. Because I felt like when I went into a meditation, I was like clicking into it, you know, as opposed to like having to really work to visualize. I do a chakra meditation and I used to have to really work at visualizing the different chakras and aligning them. And I noticed that I was just clicking into it. You know, I would just start thinking about it and I could just get myself to that place Um, and feeling a lot more grounded. That was probably the biggest aspect that I noticed, not just spirits um, physically, but in a spiritual sense of feeling totally connected and in gratitude. But at the same time, eating foods that ground you, that don't fill you with sugar, that don't wreak havoc on your nervous system. You know, so many different things that people eat, like 90% of what people think is healthy can really wreak havoc on your body and your nervous system. You know, even just a simple Mm -hmm. cup of coffee, you know, and even teas that have caffeine and those different things. And then the artificial sugars and all that kind of stuff. So I definitely noticed a difference with my overall, just how I was feeling, but feeling um, grounded, connected, less anxious. You know, I feel like I had, like you mentioned before, with people just feeling sick and thinking that's normal, these little things that especially Mm -hmm. if you feel it for years, you start just thinking, well, this is just how it is. (laughs) And you kind of forget. You know, there's this level of like not realizing that, no, it's not normal for you to have ringing in your ears all the time, you know, like that's not normal. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, you know, when we start healing these different parts of our body, we just really get that sense, especially when you do it yourself, you feel so empowered and in so much gratitude for even having the information and then having the tools, you know, that the universe has provided. Because like I said, all plants have a, you know, specific medicinal purpose and um, it, those plants tell us a lot of them do when you know what to look for, you know, like I said, the coloring and different things. So, yeah. Yeah. That reminds me like when you're at the colors of even like foods, like when I was doing, doing the juice feast, I noticed that the, the colors of the fruits corresponded to the chakras Mm -hmm. and then the connection of the chakras to those particular systems of the body. Yeah. So if I was wanting to work on a certain area, if I focused on certain plants or fruits that had that particular color of that certain area of my life, I would really focus in on that, knowing that that is something I needed to bring into balance. So I think that this is such a huge opportunity for people to think about food and herbs in a different way, because physically, if we don't take care of our bodies, our bodies become distractions to our spiritual growth. They always bring us back. They bring us back into the focus of the the physical self instead of like freeing us up to be able to, to develop other areas of our multidimensional self. It kind of just always distracts us and pulls us back into those Mm -hmm. symptoms, I think. And also to recognizing that you're in relationship, you're in relationship to yourself, to your creator, but also to mother earth and that she speaks to you. And if you understand how she works and how she can work with you and your physical vehicle and also your emotional, mental, and spiritual self, you can kind of consciously come into this conversation with her and understanding about how to work with her, how to heal your body, but also to develop certain aspects of your life that you are trying to cultivate more or you're trying to bring into balance. There's so many levels to this. And I think that a lot of people don't think about food and herbs affecting them on all of these different levels, but they do. You know, just like even like what you were saying, you know, gosh, when I was healthy and when I was uh, vegetarian and I did these things, I felt so much more grounded. Um, I felt this overwhelming feeling of gratitude, which, which immediately increases your frequency. It immediately opens up your energetic field to receive more abundance. Um, being able to be in your body and yet connected to spirit, you don't have to leave your body to feel connected. You can feel grounded and yet connected to spirit at the same time. 
And these are just all the different lessons that I feel like Pachamama or Mother Earth teaches us. It's just, there's just layers upon layers of these lessons. And I think it's so beautiful what you're saying, because I feel like it's just kind of like weaving into all of these different lessons that we can learn from Pachamama. And it's a big deal to go back to the roots, to be able to go back to the way that we're supposed to be eating and living our lives. It affects all aspects of our lives. Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah, I, I would agree too. And I think that what also sticks out is our body is like our one of our greatest tools in this human experience. And of course, we came here to experience the body, but it can feel so easy to kind of want to numb out of the body or feel completely disconnected. Um, which is interesting that as you're saying, like the ringing in the ears, that's not normal. But when we experience it so much or even being disconnected from our body, that we don't have to feel disconnected. It's just deciding to make a change and moving forward in a way that's going to be healthy, but also help you reconnect into your body. So I love that you're even bringing that up. I would be curious to hear. So one thing that I've noticed is I have gone on phases where I'll try to eat more of a plant-based diet and having such working because I do a lot of sessions connecting to their ancestors. Um, it's such a high frequency that I've noticed that I really use food to bring my energy back down or to mm-hmm. numb out. So I feel so great eating more light and more of the natural fruits and vegetables and, and stuff like that. However, I have noticed that it's almost like, I don't know how to bring it back down without eating food that buffers that energy. So what would you say, Sarah, in that concept, what would you say is a good kind of balance out in that way? Yeah, I would say, honestly, if you can, because I totally get that. I get that same experience after I do consultations with people because I get so connected with their energy that I have, I almost come out of it on a high, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to become depleted at the end of that high. And so I got to get myself grounded and brought back down. And so I try to do a lot of roots, you know, like things that are hearty, you know, because it's it's easy to want to go to junk food or something that's not healthy, because you know that it's going to make you feel weighted and heavy, right? Because it always Mm -hmm. does. It's the furthest thing from keeping you, you know, light and because you can feel grounded and connected, but also light and clear. And that's what you want. So lots of roots. You can even, you know, like it's funny and and I don't know how feasible this is for you, but I always eat potatoes. (laughs) I always do like some kind of potato, not potato chips, but potatoes, like potatoes with like peppers. I love to saute. Mm. So I always have something in the fridge that's like super easy, but it's hearty, you know, red peppers, green peppers, um, some potatoes. And on here on Maui, we have purple potatoes, which are amazing. They're the most amazing potatoes because mm-hmm. they're almost like a sweet potato mm-hmm. and they're so good for you. And they're so full of nutrients and they are literally like the deepest, darkest purple you've ever seen. They're gorgeous. Wow. So, and then I'll have like some mushrooms in there that I saute with like some garlic, you know, and some olive oil, super easy. And it's already ready to go. You don't have to eat it hot. It's fine cold. So you could have something like that prepared ahead of time, you know, especially if you're not at home. But something that's hearty, something that is going to ground you. Um, You could even do something like um, quinoa with something like a quinoa salad because quinoa has a lot of protein. So protein is going to make you feel full. Mm -hmm. Um, So anything that's high in protein is going to make you feel a lot more full. So things like that. Um, you could even do like smoothies could be a good option and put like some green spinach leaves in, you know, green, any kind of a cruciferous vegetable, um, which are your dark green vegetables literally have every single vitamin and mineral that you need. So it's going Mm -hmm. like spinach salads make you feel really full when you eat them. You don't need a lot of spinach because it is so full of nutrients. So It's just looking at your foods differently and seeing like, what am I getting from this food? So, you know, like I said, for me, I try to pick things that are healthy, but are, that are heavier in the sense that they have more protein. They make you feel more full, like oatmeal can do it for people. Um, 
So just different options like that. Everybody's different as to what, you know, tastes good and what feels good in your body. Yeah. So more of the hearty. That, yeah. yeah, that makes yeah sense. Just more nutrients. You know, it's all about the nutrients because the more nutrients of a uh, fruit or a vegetable has, the fuller you're going to feel. Mm. So that's yeah. good to know. Yeah. I heard too that natural fats actually not only do they create put fat on our bodies, but they actually create an energetic buffer mm-hmm. around the body. So one of the recommendations I also heard was um, using avocado or yeah. something on or the nuts on top of your grain. So like whole grain, like or potatoes, like you're saying, like earthy root vegetable kind of um, vegetables with protein and then some kind of healthy fat should create this natural energetic buffer to help us get back into our bodies. It's just preparing for that ahead of time because yeah. <laughs> creating new healthy habits, it takes time to reestablish those new habits and making sure. That's why I love so much about what you said, Sarah, because when you were saying that when you came across this lifestyle, you had bags in front of your house, which is so Sarah, because she's <laughs> either all in or all out, you know, she's so passionate. And, but it's, but it's actually, the way you got to do it. Because if you don't fully commit, if there's things around that are easy, that we're just used to grabbing because it was our go-to for however many years and it's a habit, we're just going to do that. Especially when we're hungry or desperate, we're feeling so ungrounded uh, and want to get back here in our present body and feel more grounded in our bodies. Then it's easier to grab this and that because it's right there. And that's what we always did in the past. Mm -hmm. So I, it's like, I think the getting prepared ahead of time, yep. I think you got to be brave and just fully jump in and say, look, I know this to be true. I just need to step into it and fully commit and believe in myself and love myself enough to do this and then get things prepared, <laughs> have things around you um, to where you can grab and go. Like you're saying, you don't need those things to be warm and ready. I mean, those things are delicious. Even if you just, you make a big batch of it or make extra extras. So that way you have those leftovers or things that you can grab, you know, yep. quickly out of the fridge. I think that is really smart. Um, yeah. And you know, another thing that I do, and I do it a lot for my kids too, is you can make like a trail mix. Nuts are super grounding and filling and you can put dates in there and raisins and cashews and all sorts of the different nuts that you like and have like a mix that's in your purse, that's ready to go. Because I do feel like a lot of people, when they transition to this healthy lifestyle, whether it's slow or whether it's overnight, I tell you, it's the same for everybody. It's a gradual process where you are going to feel, you can feel more hungry. And in reality, that's your body going through a detox process because where we actually truly feel true hunger is in our throat, not our stomachs. So Mm. when our stomachs, when we feel that churning and we feel like we're hungry, we're dehydrated, we need to go get a big mason jar of water or fresh juices because those also have water in them. Um, But it's going through that transition and knowing that your metabolism has to completely change Mm. because it does depending on what you eat and letting your body detox because you're going to detox toxins. And it's truly amazing how long your body can hold on to toxins. I mean, it's amazing. So you can go a week and be fine, hit the two week mark and just be purging and have acne and all sorts of (laughs) different detoxing symptoms and eczema and rashes and different things. And that's all very normal. It depends on the toxicity that was in your body and what needs to be cleansed and having, you know, a harder time sleeping can happen and it just takes time and it takes that willingness and the everyday. And I'm telling you being prepared ahead of time (laughs) is the only way to do it because when I'm out with those kids and we're in the truck and they're Mm -hmm. hungry they are begging me for pizza, ice cream, Mm -hmm. all those things. And if you're not prepared and you don't have food, you've got cranky, starving kids in the truck. (laughs) Yeah. You know, it's going to be easier to go get yourself pizza. So if you have 
you know, those snacks, those bags ready to go with healthy stuff that will fill you up. And then you won't even be thinking about all of the unhealthy stuff that you can choose from, you know, that is a game changer for sure. And make it easy. You know, people make it really complicated. They can, you know, just pick the things that you like to eat and get different varieties going. And nowadays, I mean, we're so blessed because when I became totally plant-based 14 years ago, they oh. didn't have all these delicious vegan mm-hmm. dressings and sauces and things ready to go. Like you can actually just go and get healthy, vegan, delicious meals where you're not even having to worry about concocting different, you know, dressings and things. You can have those things ready to go and they're delicious. Yeah. You they know, are. so we really are lucky now that we have so many vegan options, plant based options, and it's affordable, you know, especially like I noticed when Costco went from having like nothing to a ton of organic and vegan things, you know, that's what we need more of. We for do. sure. It needs to be readily available for people and affordable, you know, Absolutely. and delicious. And then you just prepare it ahead of time. Yes. What I love that you brought up too, Sarah, is that a lot of times when people are going through detox or like, this isn't working for me, you know, I have low blood sugar, I can't do this, I can't do that. They don't understand that actually what is happening is that their body is detoxing all of those years of putting those preservatives or additives or colorings or um, chemicals in their body. And it takes time for for your body to release that. And wasn't there something about like seven days, uh, you know, it's like every, there's like Mm -hmm. a a number of seven, seven months, seven years. Yep. That people go through these detox um, symptoms and it's very normal. I remember feeling that way when I was going through detox, I had a lot of hypoglycemia uh, reactions Mm -hmm. and I was like, Oh, I'm just not getting enough food and this and that. It would play with my mind and, and I realized after time, like once I kept consistent with it, that the hypoglycemia actually started to go away and I didn't have hypoglycemia anymore just by sticking with the plant-based lifestyle and juicing frequently and having all the fresh stuff. I was like, oh, interesting that this is something I thought was never going to go away. That was going to be something I was going to have to deal with for the rest of my life and come to find out it was a symptom of imbalance in my body that needed to be healed. And it could be healed just by going and and eating the things that were created for the human body. So absolutely. And hypoglycemia, therefore, then turns into diabetes. So it's really crucial to make those changes ahead of time. um, Because adult onset diabetes is not reversible. And it doesn't matter all the healthy things that you do. Yes, it's, it's always helpful, but your body has just gotten to that point. And so I was hypoglycemic as well. And I think that was a huge trigger for all my headaches as a child was that I had to have small meals in a certain amount of time, but it's because of what I was eating. It was all the Western foods, you know, and it was, you know, cheeses and a lot of meat and whole cups of milk. I mean, that's just how my family ate. And it just wreaked havoc on my body. Uh, My body could not handle it. And so it was the same for me detoxing, I had to go through headaches, I had to go through just feeling tired and grumpy. And get to that other side of feeling light and I can skip a meal and I'm not going to kill somebody, you know, you can get really irritable Mm -hmm. and have those different symptoms. So it is, it's amazing. And so I'm always so proud of people that stick with it and keep it going. And it, it has to become a lifestyle. It can't be something that you do for three months to get over a certain ailment. And then you go back to your old way of doing things. Mm -hmm. it has to be a lifestyle change. And so I actually get asked that quite a bit. It's interesting where people do feel like they can just keep eating what they're eating and take some of the herbs that I recommend and everything will be okay. And I think the hardest adjustment for people is the food, hands down. It's not hard to swallow capsules 
or take a tincture, but to change the way we view our food, because it's also a very social aspect. It's a very big social aspect. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Gatherings, holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, like those are big deals for a lot of people. And it becomes this like emotional thing, which anytime you're trying to change, it can be really difficult. And so for me, when I do consultations, I'm always reminding people the power of their words. If you sit through this consultation and continuously tell me how hard this is going to be, how hard it's going to be to not eat ice cream, how hard is it to not eat cheese? It's going to be hard. (laughs) I promise you, because (laughs) everything is energy. Everything is what we put out. So if you can change your mindset to I can do this, anything is possible. You can do anything. So I really try to work with people on their mindset because I I can get a lot of people that are like, oh, I can't have pizza. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I can't have whole milk creamer in my coffee every morning. (laughs) You know, like making those changes can be difficult. So it's a lot about your mindset and how you perceive it and perceive it as good for you and healing and everything you do to heal yourself affects everybody else around you. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Mm-hmm. and I think that's what it's about. Cause some of us just have to be the trailblazers of like doing things differently. Mm-hmm. It's not going to look the way my family did it, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> and people notice people take note when you've been doing it for 14 years and people are watching it's amazing at the t- kinds of ripple effect and the change that happens with your family and your friends it's pretty empowering it's pretty cool that is so wow. true wow i know i was thinking about you know earlier i asked you about the spiritual and how it affected you spiritually and mentally and you just brought up another area again the emotional leg because mm. you know people think, oh, this is just going, they're thinking about their physical ailment. They're thinking about their symptoms and they're coming to you. They've run out of options. And then you're like, okay, it's it's the herbs. Yes. But you're going to have to do this whole lifestyle change because the herbs are only going to take you so far. If you don't make the changes on your lifestyle and your lifestyle, then you're just going to end up back in the same position that you are today. And then they go through this journey and realize, oh, it's not just, you know, the lifestyle changes and taking the herbs. I didn't realize how, you know, how emotionally attached I was to my food, or I didn't realize that that I'm an emotional eater or that I have sentimental value to this and this and this. And, and I feel when I'm different from my family, that somehow this is pushing me out of my family or out of my groups of friends. It's like, there's, there's all of these layers. It's not just your lifestyle and diet and herbs. It affects, it affects all parts of you and it really has you really dive deep down into like why you are doing what you're doing like what is the energy behind what you are putting into your body absolutely absolutely Candice and I think that's really powerful is you know to have that acknowledgement and that realization because the reality is is not everybody does Candice and not everybody even really cares to you know, and I think that's why some stick to it and it becomes a lifestyle change and then others don't. Um, and sometimes it's just not the right time for people. Sometimes people have to go through more pain and experiences, especially physically, you know, because anybody that's in chronic pain is going to want to change whatever those habits are. But sometimes it has to get bad enough, you know, because like we were sharing earlier, People get really used to their symptoms and they almost kind of like forget that their ears Mm -hmm. are ringing (laughs) and that, you know, they have varicose veins on their legs and these different things. And, you know, so it's just really getting clear about what you want and why you're doing it, because that will get you through the hard times because it isn't always easy. And you are going to have times where you don't eat something ideal. This is not about perfectionism. This isn't about always getting it right. Um, But it is about knowing how your body works, how you can work with your body. So for example, if you go to so-and-so's party and you have those two slices of pizza that you would normally never eat, 
it's about knowing how your body works. You know, it's going to be one really hard for your body to break down and digest and get rid of. So the things I do are I take, you know, one or two cayenne pepper capsules after I eat that. The reason being is that helps your stomach create more hydrochloric acid, which therefore breaks down your food. And then you don't have problems with indigestion and bloating because those all very much can go hand in hand with eating two pieces of pizza. So it's knowing how your body works. And then, you know, like for me, I take the lower bowel formula and I have to take it every day, all the time. It's some, yeah, it's just a weakness within my body. It's a weakness within my family. It's an inherent one. And so it's something that I will always have to deal with. Um, and so taking that after, you know, you eat. Um, so it's just doing things like that, you know, can really help. Um, and not feeling like you have to be perfect. This journey is a journey. <laughs> you are going to take steps forward and you're going to take steps back. But at least you have the information to take those steps forward again and get really clear within yourself and your body you know, to know what's right for you, because everybody is different. Mm -hmm. We can't all eat the same things. Certain things irritate others and not others, you know, like we are very different. And there's a reason for that. And so it's really just getting clear within yourself as to what foods you can eat and what foods you could need to stay away from. And some just completely never eat. Like for me, a bowl of ice cream, forget it. I can never have a bowl of ice cream ever again. It just can't happen, you know? But like we were saying earlier, we're so blessed with all these delicious options. The coconut ice cream is just delicious. And there's like an avocado ice cream that is insane, you know, where they use the avocados to make it nice and creamy. If you add avos to anything, smoothies and shakes and things that makes it creamy, and you don't, you don't even taste it and you get all those good nutrients. So we're really yes. blessed. Yes. I know I made a, a raw chocolate pudding with avocado. Mm. And I remember the first time I made it um, for my family, I'm like, oh, you're putting avocado in our chocolate pudding. I was like, you got to try this. <laughs> yeah. It did not taste avocado at all. And it had okay. the exact same texture as creamy pudding. It was so delicious. So I think people just need to like open their minds about the possibilities and, and just kind of shift the perspective. It's not about going without, this is not about going on a diet. This is not about restriction. In fact, you can eat so much more when you're eating the things that are recognized by the body that are broken down easily from the body. You don't have to worry about restricting so much. You can eat a lot of bounty, a lot of color, um, such variety. And being so blessed to live at this time era where we can go to the store and we can get fruits and vegetables that are across the world that we would have never had access to a hundred years ago plus. And all year long, all year long, is pretty amazing. So it's not about restriction. It's not about lack. It's actually about just shifting the perception. It's about abundance and just living in alignment with what our bodies were meant to take in, you know, as opposed to not. So when it comes to that space, so we've talked a lot about your eating habits and having more of that high frequency you know, that natural plant-based element into your space, getting rid of like dairy or whatever, that's not going to serve your body the right way. If someone's wanting to step into taking more herbs, right. What do you say? Like, what do you suggest in looking for when it comes to say someone wants to start taking turmeric in a capsule, right? I mean, you can go to Walmart or you can go to Costco. You can go to a whole food store, Like, how do you decide or what's your biggest tip for someone who's just wanting to get started and like the best, you could say the best options, you know, cause like, especially when you have a tea, when you have a loose leaf tea versus when you buy it already pre-bagged, the loose leaf tea, you're going to get way more of the benefits versus an already made tea bag. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of that has to do with the packaging and the, they have to heat press 
those bags around the herbs and then you lose some of the nutrients. So it's definitely fresh is always going to be the best. It really, Jen, it really depends on where you live. You know, Mm. if you live in a city that has, you know, multiple health food stores, herb shops, like a list, it's going to be a lot easier. Um, But having said that, now we're at a day and age where you can order almost anything online. (laughs) So, (laughs) you know, like the Dr. Christopher's formulas, those are what I prefer to use because Um, Yes, I do use some single herbs in a single form, but I see how much more powerful herbs work in conjunction with other herbs. Mm -hmm. So I'm always using formulas and that would consist of anywhere from five to 20 plus herbs. I mean, there's a few of Dr. Christopher's like his vital herbs is full of herbs because it's the full spectrum. It's every single vitamin and mineral that your body needs. And trust me, it needs a lot. So it really depends on where you live and it's looking at what is organic or wild crafted. We're kind of at a time where wild crafting is getting more rare. And that's because it's so regulated because we need to protect these plants. So the large majority of whatever you would buy, like if you just want, like you said, just the straight up turmeric, it's finding, and most health food stores have turmeric because that's a really popular one. So it's mm-hmm. not something that you might have to specifically go to an herb shop that would have, you know, turmeric is, is like cayenne pepper. It's going to be really easy to find. So it's just making sure that it is from an organic source. And the reason why that is so important is because First of all, it doesn't have any pesticides sprayed on it, which not only kills the nutrients in the plant, but it kills the nutrients in the soil. So the plant is growing in soil that isn't um, richly packed with nutrients. Therefore, that herb, that specific plant isn't going to have enough vitamins and minerals and nutrients. And the whole point of buying these herbs are for their medicinal properties. So organic wild crafted. That's huge. Um, and just researching and looking, you know, if you have an herb shop close by, that's always best, you know, cause you are going to need more than just what a typical health food store is going to carry. Um, and like I said, I use Dr. Christopher's and you can order his on Amazon. You can, there's multiple places, but I would say Amazon is the best um, source for Dr. Christopher's specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, ha- they have all of them on there you know, it's not like you can only get just a few of them. So yeah, does that help? Yeah, no, that's perfect. I think that's good to, you know, to think about in that aspect too, because there's so much out there, especially when it comes to like eating more vegan based or not, or what kind of supplements or when to take them the best options. I feel like there's so much noise in the world Mm -hmm. that you can get so caught up in like, oh, this is the new fad, right? Like the keto diet or whatever it is that it's almost like there's benefits to different things, but also everyone's body I feel is different. And so it can be easy. And this is what I struggle with is it can be so easy to get like caught up in like, okay, everyone says this is a really good supplement. So I need to take it. But then it's like, but is that really what my body needs? You know? So it can be very easy for, I think just in general people who are interested to get like all of the noise outside to kind of like cloud everything over. So it would be good for people to work, I guess, with someone like you who has that knowledge to help give that basis. So then they know, you know, kind of where to get started at. Yeah. And I think another really, really important aspect when you are choosing the right supplements for you. Um, and it's the reason why I brought up the Dr. Christopher's formulas is because for the most part, if you go to a health food store, you're going to see a whole row of herbal formulas and tinctures and remedies and things. And it's like, how do you know what's good and what's not, whether it's organic or not organic, it may not necessarily be the right pick. So here's how you can decipher between a good product and a not good product. If you look at the ingredients on the back and you see a breakdown of the vitamins, the minerals, folic acid, any of those things, it is full of isolated chemicals, meaning 
that you do not have the plants in their whole form in that formula, even if there's one or two. If there's a breakdown at all of vitamin E in the percentage, vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin C, any of that, it is a product that has isolated chemicals. And when you use isolated chemicals, they have to come with a preservative. So when you look at a product, you want to be reading nothing but the plants. Alfalfa, shave grass, lobelia, cayenne pepper, spirulina, nutritional yeast, like the list goes on. That is the only thing that you should read in the ingredients. And that's how you know a solid product that is a whole food for your body because your body can't assimilate isolated chemicals because your body needs, like for example, calcium needs six other minerals just to be absorbed. And it isn't just magnesium, <laughs> like yeah. the calcium magnesium over the counter became so popular because scientists actually figured out that your body needs magnesium, but it isn't the only one. And the only way that you can get calcium in an organic form that your body can literally take in all the nutrients and expel the rest is in herbs like alfalfa or uh, red, res- red raspberry leaf that's extremely high, you know, different herbs like that, shave grass, super high oat straw. So yeah, that's I would have really never helpful. known that. Yeah, yeah that's really helpful because so many people are into taking the isolated chemicals, especially right now with COVID. Now a big one is vitamin D. Mm-hmm. People want to be taking all those vitamin D supplements. But the problem is, is they're taking an isolated chemical which actually depletes your body of that very mineral and others because it actually has to store it in the weak areas of the body because it can't expel it because you're using isolated chemicals and preservatives. So it's really important to make sure that you're only reading plants in their whole form in the ingredients. There will never be a breakdown of any of the vitamins and minerals unless there are isolated chemicals and preservatives. That is fascinating. And that is such good advice. I have like different vitamins. I even have Dr. Christopher's. I have a couple of those things, but I'm like, even looking at all of that while you're talking, I'm like, Oh, that's so interesting. I never knew that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that is good only, advice. It is. It's a game changer because yes, there are other good products out there um, besides Dr. Christopher's obviously, but now you'll be able to decipher between those. Usually when you're dealing with a tincture, Usually, um, I would say 90% of the time they're legit as long as they're organic because they are just those herbs in, in either like a vegetable glycerin base or an alcohol base. It's the capsules and the gels and those different things that you really have to look at the ingredients and see what you are consuming. Cause you know, like for example, I had a client, it was probably like 10 years ago. She came to the consultation with a whole bag of all these over-the-counter supplements, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin D, like you name it. And I took her off every single one overnight and her body went through like a week-long detox where she felt like she had the flu and she was almost going to give up. And I said, trust me, this is your body just detoxing and she stuck with it. And then after she went through that detox and while she was going through the detox, she was supporting her body by taking you know, the vital herbs, which is uh, Dr. Christopher's multivitamin, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, And a liver herb to help support her liver to help detoxify the toxins without holding on to them. So by that end of the week, she could see the difference in how she felt with, you know, from taking those over the counter to the whole supplements. So it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. And calcium really builds up that's how you get kidney stones is from inorganic calcium that comes from your supplements that you take and from your water depending on where you live there can be calcium in your water and that gives people kidney stones isn't that crazy Mm -hmm. and it depletes your body of calcium and you need calcium for like almost every function in your body it's pretty amazing that's why it's probably the number one that gets depleted with people, it's very, it's a very common deficiency in men and women. Which is funny because they always hear, I don't, I don't ever drink 
um, milk, but they always were like, you need to drink your milk because it has the mm-hmm. calcium. And yep. it's so funny because that's like something that you've been told since you were little, but of course mm-hmm. it might not be the best kind of calcium to be getting. I don't know. I don't know much about that. All I know is that I don't really drink dairy milk, but it's interesting that even at a young age, like you're just naturally taught that in society, but then not necessarily taught the best way to get it, (laughs) you know? Absolutely. And, you know, Americans consume the most dairy out of any country in the world. And we have the highest osteoporosis rate out of any country. Wow. So that really tells you something. And I think a lot more people, especially the last 10 years, have gotten away from that idea that dairy gives you calcium and builds your bones, you know, like that was definitely in the nineties. I think we've gotten to a point now, which is good yeah. <laughs> that we're yes. moving out of that. There's some people, yes, that still absolutely think that way. But I think a lot of people, especially over time have seen, no, actually it does cause calcium deficiency. And you see through your body giving you the red flags. Like I said, the hemorrhoids when you're pregnant, varicose veins, all these things to osteoporosis, it's not normal. That's not a normal part of aging. And that's your body telling you that there's a serious deficiency. So Mm -hmm. yeah, it's really reprogramming and doing some unlearning. Um, It really is. mm -hmm. I remember too, like when I had uh, the staph infection and I've always been um, very much into vegetarianism and I explored herbs off and on, but I pulled away from it. And around that time, you and I became friends and I I ended up contracting um, the staph infection from the hospital and from a visitation from one of our family members. And so off and on in my body, it will flare up if I'm, if I get, um, something that come up for me that's super stressful or shocking. Usually it's like something that I just get out of left field that usually will trigger it. Um, but I remember when I came to you, it was like, okay, I have the staph infection. I'm getting ready to go to urgent care to get on antibiotic, which is going to take, you know, that 10 days to two weeks of antibiotic. And then I'm going to have, of course, the natural bacteria that's going to be down. I'll probably get a bladder infection. And it's just a series of events that usually come after taking um, that. And you're like, do you trust me? And I say, yes. And you said, okay, I want you to try this. And this is going to hurt like hell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but she's like, I want you to make um, a garlic and olive oil concoction at home. And I want you to put it on that staph infection. She goes, I want you to promise me that you're going to do this for 24 hours. And I want you to see what happens. And I remember when I took that leap of faith and I went into trusting herbs and trusting you as a wise woman to take on this um, it was a, it was like a big leap of faith. It was like a reprogramming of my mind, you know, yes. because I was used to doing things a certain way, but it didn't take 24 hours within 24 hours. It was almost gone off of my finger. And I remember thinking, my gosh, I would have been on those antibiotics for 10 days. And I wouldn't have even seen this kind of result probably for about four days. Plus staph infection is excruciatingly painful and dangerous And, um, to see that kind of result in such a short period of time, again, just not only did I feel tremendous gratitude to you and for you being brave enough to really say, look, look at me, listen to me, trust me. Are you going to (laughs) listen? Yes. Um, but also it kind of, it, it reconnected me to the power of mother earth and what she can give us. And it just kind of, again, just shifted this relationship. Um, so Anyway, I, you know, sometimes when people, you know, are doing this, it can just feel really scary. You ha- it is a form of reprogramming, but these are plants. These are herbs. This was made for us. And we do need to take those leaps of faith and hit the ar- herbs as hard as the symptoms. That was the other thing that you really just yep. emphasized to me. It was like, don't pay attention to the back. You need to hit the herbs as hard as your symptoms. And that was a huge game changer for me. Yeah. And thank you for reminding me of that, Candice, because that is where a lot of people fall short when they take the herbs is they get all the perfect right things, but then they read the label on the back. So the label on the back is considered a tonic dose, which means you don't have any symptoms. You're just taking it for a maintenance. So it's always going to be really low. It's going to be like one to two dropper folds, or if it's a tincture or if it's capsules, one to two capsules twice a day or something. 
Okay, so when I have an ailment, I gauge on a scale of one to 10. So we'll use Candace's for an example, staff. That's a 10. <laughs> okay, that's mm -hmm. really bad. You don't want to mess with staff. So she, I had her putting those herbs on every 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Like she was just consistently hitting it. And that's what you have to do to be mm -hmm. able to kill whatever you have coming, going on. And another good point that you mentioned was, is how fast it went away because it came on really fast. Mm -hmm. So another gauge for me to know if I'm on the right track is that if something acute comes on with my kids and it's not going away at all within 12, 24 hours, I'm missing something. Anything that comes on acute is going to go away fast. Anything that's chronic is going to take longer. So I would always gauge when I was kind of going through this learning process with my kids of like exactly what they can eat and not eat, especially when they're sick and exactly how much of what herbs need to be used. Because really within 48 hours, no matter what you have going on, it should be cleared up and it should not, you should not see further complications like pneumonia, you know, like pneumonia happens from neglecting a cold which means that you basically get a cold, you have, you know, the stuffy nose, sore throat, whatever, but you're still eating your chocolate milkshake after dinner and eating pastas, gluten, artificial sugars, things like that. Dairy is probably the worst culprit, especially when it comes to mucus in the body. But then your cold now gets complicated because you're just feeding your body full of mucus and it's trying to rid of mucus. So now it's going to cake your lungs causing pneumonia. Mm -hmm. So for example, so it should never turn into stuff like that. That's when you know that you're missing something. You're either eating something still that you shouldn't be, or you're not taking the herbs and hitting it hard enough. But usually I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, it's something that you're eating, <laughs> you know, yeah. cause your food does really, it is the most crucial aspect of this whole change of lifestyle is it always is going to come down to your diet because yeah. it's easy to take the capsules, you know, or the tinctures, or it's that reprogramming of what you're going to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and snacks in between. And if you're stressed out or if you're bored watching a movie, you know, like rethinking what we're eating. So Wonderful. yeah, food is thy medicine, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, this has been so insightful and I'm just so grateful for, well, this has been so insightful and I'm just so grateful for, you know, all the wisdom that you have shared and everything like that. Um, Candice, do you have any other questions before we kind of close up in this space here? No, I can't think of it. I I'm just so grateful to you, Sarah. You have just been such a blessing to my life and, Ha I've learned so much from you on so many different levels. And I just want to say that I love you. Thank you for sharing your wise woman teachings with us. And yes. I know this is going to help so many people. Yeah. And in well, that, thank you. of course, and in that space, um, we will have all your contact information in our show notes. Um, but is there, you know, like a website, are you online? You know, you have your YouTube channel, all of those things. How's the best way for someone to reach out or get in contact with you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and first of all, thank you ladies so much for having me. I'm so honored to be able to come into this space. What you guys are offering is incredibly beautiful and powerful, and it's going to help so many people. So first of all, just honored to be here. Thank you so much. And yes, I do. I have um, a website and I do have a YouTube channel. Super easy. It's Maui Herbalist. That is the YouTube channel. And then my website is MauiHerbalist.com. So super easy. I've got all my contact information on there. So you can either, you know, message me directly through the website or my phone number and email is on there as well so that you can reach out to me that way to set up um, consultations. I do Zoom um, and consultations, obviously, for local people on Maui. So, yeah. So you do awesome one-on-one um, -on -one consultation. So if someone's interested in meeting with you, do you do like six-month programs or what does that look like? 
Um, no, that's not, that's not necessarily something that's necessary because really when I work with somebody, um, most times the first consultation takes about two hours because I really am concentrating on building that foundation. So we're going through your history, your health history, your diet, you know, exercise, meditating, any kind of activities, anything that feeds that person on all the different levels. So not just the physical level. And then I go through and, you know, we talk about the nutritional changes, the herbs that you can use, and then how to prepare these foods so that they have the maximum nutrients. So I really want people to become self-sufficient and do this on their own. So usually it only takes that first two hour session. And then it's like check-ins, like 30 minute, 20 to 30 minute check-ins from that point on, because they have that foundational information, which is huge because that's where you have to start. And then when they have something come up, then, you know, an ailment or something or a question, you know, like I even have clients that send like pictures of ingredients and (laughs) Mm-hmm. recipes and they're like which one's better you know so it really doesn't take it doesn't take a six month program I think the longest that I've done is a three month program and that's when you're doing an extended cleanse um and that is actually something that I'm going to be posting a video on on YouTube here this week or weekend so it's because it's come up a lot for me a lot mm-hmm. of people are wanting to know how to do this extended cleanse so that's kind of how it looks when I I do a consultation with somebody. Yeah, that's perfect. Well, thank you so much. And once again, we do have all the show notes, all your information there and how people can get a hold of you and everything like that. So thank you so much, Sarah. We're just so, so, so grateful. And you're such a great light and example. So thank you. Well, thank you so much for having me, ladies. (laughs) Thank you, Sarah. And thank you everyone who has joined us today on our episode.